Well, wasn't worship great this morning? I love the environment of worship, the way the lights drop, the way the different songs and different parts make me feel. <clears throat> when the song builds to an all-out praise, worship is awesome. I can't wait for Sundays so that I can worship again. You ever find yourself thinking that as you go throughout your week, as maybe Monday hits and, and the struggles of life start to hit you, and you're like, man, is it Sunday yet? I mean, really, why do I have to wait an entire week to worship? But what is worship? Is it the music that is played when the singing happens? We call this whole thing a worship experience. Why, when only one part of it is worship? Is worship more than just on Sundays? Can I worship every day of the week? Well, in thinking about all these questions, I thought, why not talk about worship today? What is worship? Why do we worship? And how do we worship? These are questions that maybe you have thought about in preparation for Sunday. Maybe you're here and you're like, great. We are going to talk about worship. And I don't even like the worship part. You suffer through the music being played and you really just want to get to the message. Well, that, well, today we are not talking about that kind of worship. We're not talking about the kind that has, it really has nothing to do with music. I'm not going to do a lesson on how to sing, how to play an instrument, or even how to do my passion up in the tech booth, the techie stuff. No, we are going to talk about the kind of worship that can transform your life beyond Sundays. In Romans 12, Paul says, therefore, therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. So at a first glance, I can't help but be a little freaked out by this and get hung up on the offering your bodies as a living sacrifice part. But stay with me. So what is worship? Tim Keller used an analogy that I thought was a brilliant way of describing worship. Imagine you have a ring that you inherited that the stone is something that kind of looks like something that came out of a gumball machine. You keep it around because, you know, you know it has been passed down throughout your family. Maybe it kind of sits in your dresser drawer mixed in with all your socks. Maybe it isn't even in a box. Sometimes you forget that you even have it. Then one day, you open your drawer to get a pair of socks and realize that you haven't done laundry in a while. <laughs> and all that is left in this drawer is this ring. Curiosity begins to flood your mind. And begin, you begin to ask yourself, I wonder what the deal is with this ring. I wonder what it is worth. So you decide to make an appointment with a jeweler to get it appraised. The day comes for the appointment. You have tons of errands to do, so you decide, you think that you're going to just drop it off. So you, so you, you go in the dresser drawer that's now full of socks because you did your laundry, and, and you pull it out and you shove it in your pocket. Then you go to drop it off. But when you hand it to the jeweler, the jeweler all of a sudden says, hmm, interesting. Well, with that, you decide, well, those errands aren't that important. Let me stick around and see what's so interesting. So the jeweler sits down and gets out his tools and starts examining the stone that is placed on the ring. Remember, it looks like it came out of a gumball machine. As he begins to examine it, his breathing changes. His facial expressions change from, a, from being all serious to a smile of excitement. Then he looks up at you and says, well, you have, one, one, you have a one-of-a-kind thing here. This stone is so rare and so perfect, I can't even put a monetary value to it. You leave the shop with a flood of emotions. Your entire outlook on this ring has changed. Before you leave the shop, you ask, you actually purchase a box to put the ring in. You get in the car and all of a sudden those errands that you were going to do didn't ma doesn't, don't matter at all. 
You put the box that the ring is in into the glove compartment where it is safe. You bring it home and instead of putting your sock drawer, you put it in your underwear drawer. <laughs> no, you actually put it in your safe. So how does this relate to worship? Well, the word worship comes from the old English term worth-ship, meaning the acknowledgement of worth. Worship is acknowledging the worth in such a way that it transforms us. It transforms our mind, emotions, and actions. So with the ring, there are emotions once you discover the worth of it. All of a sudden, you think differently about it because it is known to be worth so much more. And because of that, you act differently. In this case, you store it, in, store it and protect it in putting your safe. In a similar way, worshiping God is acknowledging his worth in such a way that it transforms our mind, emotions, and our actions. But is God only worshiped on Sundays? No, Romans 12.1 says, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Offer your bodies as a living sacrifice. Let our lives be lived in such a way that we are acknowledging the worth of God. Let us view Sundays as a day to corporately come together and have it be an outpouring of the worship that our lives have reflected Monday through Saturday. So what is worship? And more specifically, worshiping God. Acknowledging His worth in such a way that it transforms our entire being mind, emotions, and actions. It changes the way you think, the way you feel, and the way you behave. So now that we know what worship is, why do we worship? Well, because we all do it anyway. I have, I have heard people say that they believe in God, but they aren't religious. I've also heard people say that they don't worship any God. They are wrong. We all worship. It might not be God, but we all worship something or someone. In Romans 1, 21 through 25, it says, For although they knew God, they neither glorified him as God nor gave thanks to him. But their thinking became futile, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Right here we see Paul is addressing this very thing that we hear so many people say. I know there's a God, but I'm not religious. I'm not, I, don't, I really don't worship. We go on, to, it says, Although they claimed to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images made to look like mortal human beings and birds and animals and reptiles. Therefore God gave them over to their, in their sinful desires of their hearts to sexual impurity for the degrading of their bodies with one another. They exchanged the truth about God for a lie and worshipped and served created things rather than the creator who is forever praised. Amen. We all worship. But are we worshipping the creator who is forever praised? Or are we worshipping created things rather than the creator himself? Some of us, me included, sometimes worship people. Maybe it's a relationship, a friend, significant other, spouse, child, grandchild, you fill in the blank. Maybe you worship the affirmation of these people. So what happens when one of these imperfect, flawed human beings, who Paul describes in Romans 3 as those who have fallen short, what happens when they do something which hurts you or offends you? Does it completely wreck you? Does it bother you so much that it consumes you to the point of making a poor decision? Do you lash out? Do you shut down? Are you placing your worth and that person's worth higher than what God says about you and what God says about them? Are you letting it consume you to the point where it consumes your mind, emotions, and your actions? Who are you worshiping? Another thing people worship is money. I hear, heard people once say that you can see a lot about a person based on their check register 
for those like me or your online bank account. Are you worshiping God with your money? Are you managing it responsibly? Are you using your money to glorify God and use it for his desires or your own? I personally struggled in this area myself, and one thing that helped me was financial peace, and that is coming up in the next couple of months. If you struggle worshiping God through your finances, financial peace might be your next step. There are so many examples of things we put before God, things that we worship. Too many for me to list for myself because my list is long. But the truth that remains is we all worship. The question is, are we worshiping people and other things that were created by the creator or, or, or are we worshiping the actual creator? Why should we worship God? Because of the mercies he has shown us. I mean, that is what Romans 12 says, in view of God's mercies. We should be worshiping the one that has mercy on us. The one that regardless of what we have done, he still accepts us. The one that sent his one and only son to die for us so that we can have a relationship with God, the God of the universe. That even in our sinful, broken state, all he asks of us is to believe in him. The God that is alive and, and is active, that can transform our lives. I don't know about you, but having a life transformed by that kind of God sounds a lot better than the other things or people I have worshipped. So now that we know all of this, how do we worship? Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Do not conform to the pattern of this world. That is hard. We live here. It isn't like we just, that we just watch the world on the TV. We actually live here. We raise kids here. It's like saying to someone who moves from New York to Georgia, never to say y'all. I mean, it, it would be nearly impossible. But what if we were down in Georgia, you were down in Georgia, and some of us New Yorkers, we moved down there, and then we, we had this little community of New Yorkers down in Georgia. Maybe once in a while we would say y'all, but the likelihood of that would be slimmer and less often because of this community of us New Yorkers. The best way for us to worship is in community. In Psalms 95, the psalmist says, Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. For the Lord is great, is the great God, the great king above all gods. In his hand, you are the, are the depths of the earth. And the mountain peaks belong to him. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands formed the dry land. Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord our maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, the flock under his care. If you notice, there's a lot of us, our and we's in Psalm 95. We aren't meant to just worship alone. We're meant to worship in community. Many of you know that my mom had surgery back a week and a half ago. The surgery wasn't just stitching up a minor cut. She actually, she really just, she had two or three surgeries in one surgery. It was, it was about a four hour surgery. I'm not a medical professional, so I really don't know exactly the, the depth of those surgeries. But nevertheless, nevertheless, she had surgery with a long recovery. My mom is single. She lives alone. So with having a surgery, with having a surgery, she had some doubts and concerns over how finances would work out and how recovery was going to go. One day, she felt really compelled to reach out to some people and ask them to walk alongside of her 
with this. Some of you are in this room today. So she reached out to you, and she began having a group of people that were praying for her. And really, when my mom, when my mom was struggling, they could point her back to Jesus. Although it may or may not have been said, they were and are helping her worship God through her struggle in preparation towards surgery. Interestingly enough, a one week after she asked these people, she felt compelled for these people to pray for her and to walk alongside of her. One week later, a doctor that she works with or works in the Bassett Network, one of those doctors gave up two weeks of his vacation time for her to use as sick. Additionally, her work raised enough money for my mom to be rent-free for two months. But even better than that, she was blessed with a community of people that were pointing her to her creator. They were worshiping God alongside of my mom. By the way, my mom's probably watching us at home. <laughs> uh, and she's recovering well. Um, <clears throat> I am also in a group of people similar to, to my mom's group. They are a group of guys that I meet with almost every week. There's a time to go through some material, but we aren't just studying God's word. We're actually helping each other apply it. We are helping each other to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. What we are actually doing is helping each other in our pursuit to worship the Creator by learning more about Him. This group of guys is the guy, the group that I reach out to when I need prayer, when I am struggling through something. These guys ask me the questions like, what does this say about God? Or what does this say about what He's done for you? We are worshiping God together. If you aren't in one of these groups that I'm talking about, what we call disciple maker groups. I can't encourage you enough to pull out your communication card sometime today and write in big letters somewhere, disciple maker group. It will transform your life. You see, I can read Romans 12, specifically that says not to conform to the pattern of this world and give a message about a bunch of do's and don'ts. But you and I would walk out of here feeling like crap. But what if we were all in a community where we could over time be vulnerable, transparent, and honest with a group of people that loves us and cares about us, but more than that will point us to the truth about what our Creator says. So what is worship? Worshiping God is acknowledging his worth in such a way that it transforms our mind, our emotions, and our actions. Why do we worship? We are all worshiping something. Why shouldn't we be worshiping the creator rather than the created? And how do we worship? In community with other believers. Worshiping God is not something we do just on Sundays. It isn't a life surrendered to him. It is inviting him into every aspect of our lives. It is honoring him with every part of our being. It is worshiping him when no one else is around. It is reflecting his grace when we think people don't deserve it and realizing that we didn't deserve it either. It isn't something, it is thinking about what Jesus would do in every situation we face and not walking through life alone. If you think you can do this life on your own, you are terribly misinformed. Even Jesus had people that he walked through life with. If he had people to walk with, how are you any different? There are testimonies upon testimonies upon testimonies of people who are in community with others that are experiencing these life transfer transformational relationships. Don't do this alone. So how do we define this worship that we have on Sundays? Sunday, wor sun Sunday worship is the outpouring of the worship we have done Monday through Saturday. It is worshiping Him 
through the entire week. We are going to end today with a song that entered my mind in preparation for this message. As the band comes up and begins to play, I just wanted to point out the chorus of this song. Really, this defines Romans 12.1. Amazing love, how can it be that you, my king, would die for me? Amazing love, I know it's true. It's my joy to honor you. And all I do, I honor you. As we sing this song today, let this be an anthem of our hearts. That our desire would be that in all we do, we will strive to honor him. The only one worthy of our praise. Saturday and Sunday, then in all we do, we would honor you.